Hello again, I am Jim Bob and welcome back to City Skylines Mass Transit. And I have been busy putting in some basic road networks. Now the game is paused again at this point in time. And you'll see why as soon as I unpause time. <laughs> Something big is about to happen. Uh, but what I've done over here is I've started to put in a bridge. And for some reason there, there seems to be an extra support there that I can't quite get rid of while time is paused so we have this one little piece here that needs to be switched out and I can't upgrade yet so I'm hoping I'll be able to fix that once we get the game up and running again what I've done as well is we have this kind of little end to our uh, district over here and I've linked it basically around here and created a road network for a uh, low density residential area over here linking to a roundabout here and then we've got a dual carriageway which links around with some more little side streets and this isn't the completed district this is just putting in a basic starting framework for us to, to build upon this time out uh, to come back up to this big roundabout here uh, so there's that and then uh, I've gone in and I've upgraded the road type a little bit just to add in some trees down the middle for decoration leading into our square here for our commercial zone and I put a side street in so we can actually come off this way uh, with some service buildings maybe uh, branching off to another little district somewhere and then I've started to create the ring road as well so it swings around here comes down towards the water and runs along there and that's what this is over here as well this is uh, the continuation of the ring road on this side so it kind of comes over here it climbs up this gradient and I actually lowered the terrain a little bit here so that I could get with this gradual slope going up I actually lowered the terrain beneath the bridge once I built it with the terraforming tools so I could get that road to go underneath because there hadn't wasn't initially enough clearance and then this kind of comes up here and will then run along here and will run alongside the railway line for a little bit before it then moves off somewhere else uh, in terms of other stuff that I've been doing uh, I have also started the D-Zone process. So if you come over here, you can see we've got a whole load of low-density buildings back. In fact, we can just see there's a bird just floating just there on the edge of the camera. Look, how cool is that? A paused bird in mid-flight. Um, <laughs> it's like someone dangling a bunch of keys in front of a baby, suddenly just distracted by, <laughs> by something there. Um, but yeah, so we're going to start messing around with the road networks here a little bit. So we've we put all these kind of weird little road options in um, because we were having too much traffic and we're trying to find ways to, to, to quell it a little bit and help it flow a little bit better. We can kind of start reverting some of these roads back to normal. But uh, all of this has been kind of rezoned and some of it has spawned, some of it hasn't. Uh, some of it still needs to despawn so it can start spawning in replacement stuff. Uh, but it can't do that while the game is paused. Um, now you can see we even have something being built mid-process just there, look. A uh, little house being built up. So I've started to, to uh, zone this area down to low density all through here. Uh, I've also done the same here in Scotter Square. I've started rezoning this back to low density, which is what, what it was originally when we first built it. Uh, and same around here as well. Uh, I've started rezoning this section here uh, into low density as well. Uh, as for other areas, uh, I haven't done anything else with this set just here yet. I did reset this road back to normal. So you can see there's nothing here at the moment because all the high density buildings have been removed uh, and the low density is zoning is back in place. There's just no demand for residential at the moment. So that's why they haven't come back. Uh, a lot of traffic on the roads as well as you can see. And, and we're going to see less traffic on the roads going forward as our city kind of starts to readjust and the housing spreads out more across our entire city rather than being concentrated in this large block here in the middle. A lot of this is going to get dezoned down to low density in the future as well. Like I said, this is going to be one large big kind of sprawling suburb. And what I've also done is I've gone in and I've tweaked some of the districts a little bit. So I've made a couple of them a little bit bigger. I've added in some additional districts try to zone things together so we've got some more options uh, for uh, uh, traffic control uh, and for policy control and also for subscriber names so we are adding them in still on a 
two or three per episode basis. So do keep those requests coming in. I do still have a list of names of you know, requests that I've received already and we are plowing our way through that list with two or three being added in every single episode. So do keep those requests coming in. Uh, but now it's time to show you the reason why we are paused because we have a sinkhole about to happen. <laughs> And as soon as this came up, as I started doing, as I was just doing some zoning stuff, I immediately thought that would be an interesting way to start the next episode. So I immediately kind of just slammed the brakes on, paused it, uh, did a little bit of extra work while everything was paused. Uh, and here you can see we've now got districts up here. So you can see we've got all these extra districts in around here. Uh, and I just reworked some of these a little bit. Have I got two Myrtles? Oh, I've got a Myrtle Hills and a Myrtle District. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, what I've also done, because Faz had requested a commercial square and we'd kind of turned Poplar District into a kind of commercial hub uh, and now it's being rezoned to low density, what I've done is I've relocated uh, Faz's uh, commercial square. You know, I've renamed his district over here as Faz Square because that's our new commercial kind of block just here. Uh, so a slight change there. Uh, but everything else is as it was. So let's find out where this sinkhole is going to hit us. This could be bad. Oh god, it's going to hit right in Pecky Lane. Oh, sorry, Martin. <laughs> your uh, your lovely freight Your business is ruined. Somewhere in the city. Stay out of harm's way and contact authorities with any information. Oh wow, that's uh, that's a big sinkhole. Right, has that scrambled anything from our? Let's pause for a second. Has that scrambled anything from our disaster response unit? Not yet. Let's uh, keep an eye on this. Anything coming out of disaster response? No, I guess. You know, this is purely just for earthquakes, I'm guessing then. Obviously, you know, the destruction uh, and annihilation of, uh, of uh, Martin's um, Pecky's Limited here is not classed as a disaster <laughs> by our disaster response team. Sorry about that, Martin. Right, uh, we need to fix this. Uh, so, let's go into terraforming, first of all. Uh, and I want the level terrain tool so let's find the level set it there and now let's rebuild the terrain fill that sinkhole back in there we go that's not bad it's not quite the right height so let's uh, reset the height there there we go that's better And just repair a bit of terrain around there. Okay, uh, you can see our pipe network has been damaged underneath as well, thanks to that sinkhole, because we now have water shortages popping up in our in our district over here. Look, so that's not good. So we need to kind of fix that. We also have road that's been completely destroyed and road that's been damaged as well. So you may well have seen in roads. We just go into any old road. Let's, we're going to want one-way roads, aren't we? So you may well have seen we have the ability to repair roads. Now, this is from the Natural Disasters update. So what we can do is select that, and then any damaged bits of road like this, we can basically highlight those and repair those bits of road, because you can't get traffic going on those until they are repaired. Uh, so I think... That's it just for the damaged road. Is this damaged as well? Yes. And you can see we have that little symbol there, that kind of broken down house to show that the road has been damaged. There we go. That's fixed. So now we need to draw in some new road to replace what's been completely destroyed and get uh, Pecky Lane back up and running again. So let's connect all those back up. Uh, and you can see it's renamed it as Sycamore Street for the bits that we've dropped in. So we've got a little bit of Pecky, a little bit of Sycamore, a little bit more Pecky. And then we've got Pecky along here. And then it goes to Sycamore for the new bit we dropped in, back to Pecky. So we need to fix that as well. So we're going to go into the um, 
inspection tool we're going to go to roads and we're going to select pecky lane there we go and we are going to go to option four adjust road so you can see that there is the start point of pecky lane that's the end point and what we're going to do is we're going to drag the end point to there and now that's linked all of that together and now I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it along here to there and now that is all pecky lane and what I want to do is well, we'll leave that as Robert Street that's what it was before uh, but there we go that's how you basically repair your roads uh, rebuild your roads and then if the names get changed that's how you link it all back into a single road again using those different tools so a nice little chance to kind of do a mini tutorial here at the start of the episode as well thanks to that uh, wanton destruction there let's reconnect our water pipe network as well uh, is that all that needed to be fixed just that single piece I think it was so the damage could actually have been a lot worse we kind of got away with it a little bit there let's just take out some of these uh, abandoned buildings uh, our industry area is really suffering for workers at the moment because of the way that we've been you know putting in this business park and this commercial zone over here and downgrading these zones part of the uh, the changes that I've made to the districts uh, you can see here I've rezoned you know this area as Poplar District just a generic name and I have put the schools out policy on there uh, I've reinstituted the schools out policy back here in Scotter Square um, and I've also added a schools out policy. Where else did I add it? Did I add it anywhere else? No, I didn't. I, it was um, it was just in Poplar District. That was the extra district I zoned. But again, we don't have a lot of houses back in there yet, so we are struggling a little bit for workforce at the moment. We may need to change one of our other districts temporarily to schools out as well, and see if that helps. Right, it's unfreeze time again. There's our water network connecting back up. Pecky's is back up and running. There we go, Pecky's Limited. Train coming in and we have uh, a nice little bit of freight being unloaded. You can see all the trains and vehicles making their way out as a result of that. Excellent stuff. And we're, we're struggling again for workers here in our uh, lumber industry as well. Again, you can see just how empty this zone looks while we're waiting. We have zero demand for housing right now. Uh, and with the changes that I've made, I did actually slightly increase Faz Square's commercial zone around the edges as well. So you can see we've got a few gaps where new buildings are being spawned in around the edge of the road, which wasn't originally zoned. So this bit here... Uh, this bit along here, down here, this corner piece here, and along here, and a couple of buildings along here as well. And I also had to rework the power lines over here a little bit as well. Everything seems to be running reasonably smoothly. Uh, it's obviously going to get a little busy around here, but it's one way, so hopefully everything should flow. Uh, and our bus route... I think I showed you the bus route? I can't remember. Uh, but I'll, I'll just go to modify the line if I can. You can see we're currently running 14 buses on this. We're saving 57% of car trips. It's a uh, it's a, a needed loop. So basically this loop here, as you can see, uh, it just runs around Faz Square and then comes out to the roundabout, down this road here, into uh, Yatta Square, and Marcel, if I am pronouncing your name wrong, I do apologise. You'll have to let me know because um, uh, I don't want to get that wrong. Uh, and then runs round the edge here and then comes back out along the roundabout and then runs back to Faz Square as well. So uh, it just literally links the two districts there. And one of the stops, as you can see, right here, right outside the station. Uh, and we've got four trains running and you can see we're getting a good number of people using our train service as well so uh, we do get a nice little flurry of people using the bus you can see these guys queuing here a whole load of people just got off the bus and are now spilling onto the platforms so we're getting a good movement of people 
to the offices and then from the offices you know they're also able to get onto the commercial route for the bus as well and you can see a whole load of people they're kind of wandering off and <laughs> they're using this stop here there's a stop right outside the station but they don't want to go to that one for some reason they want to walk all the way down here and stop there <laughs> i don't know why maybe what we need to do to stop that from happening is move this stop to there see if that makes a difference and uh, let's see where are our stops I'm gonna take this one out so I'm gonna highlight it and then just press square to delete that stop got to be careful when you do this because if you do it on the line itself and you press square you delete the entire line uh, so you want to make sure that you've got the ring around the stop itself otherwise you know you end up eliminating the entire bus route and that's not what you want so I'm just looking to respace these stops a little bit. And you can see all of a sudden there's no people making their way. There's a few people there. They're now all kind of queuing over here and over here. So the reason I moved that stop is so that I can drag this one down a little bit further away from the station as well. And try and get people to actually use this stop here. Whether it's going to work or not, I don't know. There's still a whole load of people walking off that way. Uh, we'll see, I suppose, when the next train comes in. Look how many people are now using the train service. So much more than before. And you can see there's a bunch of them going off to car parks. There's a few people using this one here. And the rest... Look at these green guys. Are they tourists? I think these guys in green... Oh no, they're waiting for a taxi. That's what it is, because you can see the colour of the taxi stop there. And they are the same people. So these are guys waiting for a taxi. We need to increase the number of taxis we have, because <laughs> we just don't have enough. Uh, and, and they're all still flooding down to this stop look. That is weird. I don't know why they do that. I mean, maybe they think they're saving a bit of time. They're going to end up just standing there waiting and waiting and waiting because it's going to, you know, they, <laughs> this stop's going to fill up the first. So, yeah, we definitely need to look how many people are waiting for cabs. We need to get another taxi uh, service, another taxi depot somewhere in our city. We can actually put one in somewhere over here. Let's see. Yeah, let's put a taxi business just there. And then we'll put a stand here, like that. So you can see there is a whole wave of taxis flooding out to go and answer some pickup calls. How many taxis can you get per depot? It's quite a lot. And then it varies depending on the budget as well. Uh, 25 at the moment. What is our budget? for taxis. Let's take a look at the economy. I have raised my taxes back up to 11 uh, just to help with the budgets a bit, the finances. Let's scroll down to taxis. Uh, taxis are at 100%, so 25 per depot. We've got two depots now, so that's 50 taxis in service across our city. Probably going to need another one. That might be not be enough, but we go back to info, info views. No, transport routes how many people are waiting for taxis now there's a few people here still waiting as we can see there's a taxi whizzing through off to pick up somebody over there there we go just hang around here for a second we should get some more taxis turn up there goes one any more for any more so I've got 14 buses running this loop and I just can't seem to make a dent in the uh, the number of people waiting. It looks like someone's given up on their taxi. There goes another one. Dropping someone off outside the station. Oh, she's moving. And there's a whole load of people now queuing for taxis here by, near the bus stop. Oh, finally! It does look as though people are using this stop. It looks like they're stopping going over here 
So it is finally starting to shake through. Sometimes people have, you know, the AI has a set programmed route, and if you change something about the route, uh, while they as soon as they've started that route, they don't necessarily immediately pick up on that change. So you'll notice that you can change. Uh, there's a couple of taxis there. Look, uh, you can change something in in a bus route, and the buses or the trains. You know, if you change the stops or the number of buses or something like that, they don't initially register the change. Sometimes it takes a little while for the route to change and show the change. Uh, and it's the same with traffic. You can put uh, you know some extra slip roads and stuff in to try and change the flow of traffic a little bit. And it sometimes it can take a little while. For traffic to start using it it doesn't happen instantly because the traffic that's coming through already has their route pre-programmed <clears throat> they know the shortest route they had to go from point a to point b <coughs> oh, excuse me uh, they knew the shortest route to go from point a to point b and if that route changes part route they, they don't always register it so sometimes they don't register the change until they get you know, either closer to or right where they're supposed to be going. Uh, and so they'll stick to the original route that they were taking. Uh, and then sometimes, you know, on their next journey, then they'll register that the route has changed because there's a new shorter route and they'll start taking that. So it's a little bit, you know, a little bit funny sometimes. It doesn't always kick in immediately. It depends on what it is, that you, what's going on. But uh, getting quite busy on the roundabout, Let's start to upgrade this to a triple lane roundabout. See if that helps. There we go. And hopefully that'll help with lane management a little bit. And yet you can see uh, traffic that doesn't want to turn off is now using the middle lane rather than uh, the outside lane that's good so we are getting that flowing of traffic a little bit better now our industry is just collapsing look <laughs> it's terrible and now we've got a big spike of desire for residential so hopefully these areas are starting to fill up you can see here Scotter Square is filling up and we've got construction and upgrades going on to some of these houses as well uh, Poplar District, again, you can see that's filled up pretty quickly now. That's good to see. And a little bit more development going on there as well. Some more people being born in those houses. They will continue to upgrade. Um, where else can we change? Oh, over here. Yes, that road has now spawned houses back in again. And hopefully those will start to upgrade. There's an upgrade going on right there. And another one just there. So uh, we are starting to repair, you know, some of the uh, the blank spots that we've created by dezoning. Uh, and there's still a lot of traffic in there because we've got people moving out of the city and new people moving in, uh, and just a lot of traffic in general still. So until we kind of really attack Belmont and Cherry Square, we're still going to have a lot of traffic. But it's not quite as heavy as it was before. Uh, it seems to be traffic on the way out now, whereas it was always traffic on the way in. Uh, and there's a large flood of extra traffic going up here because of these new houses that have just spawned in. So we should see quite a few cars going straight over here. As they start to filter in towards their new houses. And look at the sudden flurry of activity of these houses levelling up. They're moving into an area with good facilities, good services... Uh, and you know, not only have they been built, they're very quickly upgrading to the next level as well as they're kind of gaining some experience. So if we just click on this one here, you can see that's now moved up to block two. Uh, this one's still at block one, but it should upgrade pretty soon, I would have thought. This one here is now at block two, and it's already, you can see there's a thin blue line at the end of the second green block. It means it's already started to gain the, the I don't know, I suppose, experience would be a way of looking at it. It's started to gain that little bit of boost that it needs to move up to the next block. And that one there. We saw that one upgrade a minute ago and you can already see there's a, a thicker blue block there now. So that one's definitely in the process of leveling up again. There's a house there that's just leveled up. 
you see that new, new green block spawning in. So that's going to increase the number of people in the house. We've got seven at the moment. There we go. And now we have, hopefully, potentially space for some more people to go in that house. That one's on its way to the next level as well. And here's another one. <coughs> Twelve people in this house. And that's going up to the block, the, yeah, the second block. Really good to see. But, yeah, this whole area is kind of rebuilding itself. And our population is climbing again. And it's, it won't be long, I hope, before you know, we get to start repairing some of the damage to our industries. Start getting more workers in. Because new people will go into the education system. And then depending on the district they're in, they'll you know either pursue further education or they'll go into work. And the new kind of low density stuff we spawned in all has a go off and go and get a job kind of policy in the district so hopefully that'll start supplying some workers back here into these districts because we have kind of shipped quite a few of our kind of workforce over here uh, into this area here I did actually put a little bit of high density residential in here just around the edge uh, just to make sure that we had workers to feed this office block and also with the bus route to feed workers into this commercial block as well because initially this commercial block was struggling for workers uh, but that's now kind of resolved itself with that little bit of high density housing around here to kind of supply workers to both of these districts and we're still getting people coming in by train uh, and then going off on the bus route as well to kind of go off and get to get a job or travel to work so it's all kind of starting to take shape uh, and now as you can see we are developing this area and this is going to be low density so let's start popping in some uh, water piping first of all so we've got a nice kind of little link across here to this area let's see if we can uh, connect up our uh, our different pipes just gonna need a little spot just popping up just to cover that corner there we go uh, spin around this way let's uh, extend this pipe out a little bit further uh, we'll drag that up to there like that and then we create another pipe about here and we want to run that sort of up here like this and then we're going to want another one sort of about here and again run that straight up there we go and I'm not too worried about those little bits just there and that's pretty much okay so we've got some water coverage so now let's start zoning in some housing and some low density commercial. Let's go to uh, the select, no, the fill tool first of all. We'll drop in our low density commercial. So let's see where do we want that. Uh, I like the idea of having a little commercial area over here on those little streets here and this road just down here as well. So we'll have a little block here of low density commercial. Uh, let's put in uh, a few shops on this kind of little corner piece just here as well. Uh, let's do the same here. Drop in a little bit of commercial there. Doesn't need to be a lot. That should be enough actually. Uh, and then we can take the large paintbrush tool and we can just paint the rest of this as residential like this and we should start to see houses spawning in here pretty quickly I'm hoping and as soon as they get close enough they should you know get uh, as soon as they get close enough over here they should start to connect a power grid 
into this area over here and then we've got this area over here I'm not sure what to do over here we are going to need a school over here let's put in um, an elementary school or primary school let's see where do I want to put the school let's put the schools in here so we'll put the uh, the primary school there and we'll put the middle school secondary school or high school whatever you want to call it we'll plonk that in just there uh, we're going to need uh, well actually no we don't need police and fire and all that because we've got police and fire just there we've got a hospital just there and they're right round the corner so we don't actually need to connect those up they've got a nice easy run straight into this district here so those should be good I did add a crematorium somewhere. Where did I add the crematorium? There. There it is. So I added a crematorium over here. And for now, I think that should be enough. You know, our cemeteries, I've got two of them emptying at the moment because they filled up pretty quickly. That one's done. So we can start to accept bodies back into that one there. This one's still got a little bit to go. Down to 710 out of 3,000. So a little bit more unloading on that one to go yet. You can see this area is now starting to spring in. And we've actually got the power connection already, look. Uh, where has that... It must be here that's caused the link. Or maybe it was something over here, perhaps. Let's have a look. Uh, it was over here, look. It was just here, and then we've got new builders coming in here. And it was over here as well, actually. That was probably the link that started it. And then we got this connection with these new buildings going in just here that's added a, a secondary link to this district here. So that'll help. Again, we've got a worker shortage. We're still waiting for more people to move in. Problem is we've got an abundance of jobs at the moment because we've still got a lot of high-density commercial and a lot of high-density you know, uh, in industry with the offices. So we do have a kind of a, a surplus of jobs. You know, it's going to be uh, very, very low unemployment at the moment. Oh, look at this. It's just decimated our lumber industry. It will eventually fix itself, but I think we might dezone a bit of this just to help us out for now. Let's go to fill, uh, and let's take out that piece and that piece there. Uh, let's take out those as well. Just to take a little bit of the pressure off. There we go. And we've got a large, uh, a large commercial demand, so I'm not going to do anything with our uh, standard industry but I'm hoping that you know just creating less jobs in the industry means it'll spread the workers around a bit better let's just clear out these abandoned buildings oh, there's a lot of them over here still And they're instantly being refilled which is great you know <laughs> we have a demand but we don't have workers enough enough workers to supply the area uh, Myrtle district at the moment is just a standard district I kind of want to leave it like that Aspen Park should be a schools out district yeah it is look there's a the schools out symbol next to the recycling symbol is there another one I can kind of co-opt? Uh, maybe Broad Heights? Yeah, let's make Broad Heights a schools out district as well. Hopefully that'll help supply some extra workers. See, we've got a couple of abandoned 
services here inside Nicholson Farm. They're falling on hard times. Just clear out. Oh, that was the wrong building. <laughs> Whoops. There we go. Let's clear a couple of those out and see what spawns in. And I will be relocating our disaster response unit closer to the sort of, you know, our city, you know, as the time comes. Uh, we'll probably leave these two depots, these heli helicopter depots here, and then we can uh, relocate or we can add in additional depots elsewhere. You can see, look, you know, now that these houses are in, they are still going through the level up process. You see the little green arrows popping up from time to time. Uh, a birth symbol there, someone else moving into a house over there, another one being born in that house there. Scotter Square seems to be doing okay. We've got a small abandoned building over here. Let's get rid of that. But the houses are in. And they're still pinging and upgrading as well. That's good. There's one of our police choppers on patrol. Real shortage. Oh, look at that. It's decimated the workforce over here. We just don't have the workers at the moment. I think maybe we've got a little bit too much commercial over here. So let's rezone some of this as residential. No point having commercial if they can't if it can't be supported. So we may as well make this residential. And again, we're not stretching our workforce too thin that way. There we go. We've got those two little blocks. We probably don't even need these low-density ones in there because we've got the big commercial block just here. But we'll leave a couple of little areas like that. Hopefully, that'll sort things out. We still don't have much of a demand for residential, which is why a lot of this new area has yet to be developed. But we are seeing a few extra houses kind of popping in from time to time. We can see more people are moving into the area, which is good. And a couple of those houses are leveling up as well. There's a new house being built. So it'll take a little bit of time, but this area will develop. So I'm just going to let things run for a little while. Uh, and let this zone in a little bit better and then we'll come back and uh, and see where we are Okay, so this area is just about kind of finished zoning itself in. Uh, still some pings of houses that are upgrading. Loads of new people being born in those upgraded houses as well. Oh, excuse me. So this area is definitely getting stronger and stronger. And I realized that I haven't put any uh, leisure stuff in this area yet. So I think we can uh, drop in some playgrounds and some parks and stuff and give this whole area a boost. And then we'll see a whole flurry of activity of uh, buildings pinging and leveling up. So let's put a playground in near the schools, if we can. I think we want to go with a large playground, actually. Would a large one fit? Not really. <clears throat> I can just about squeeze a large one in on the edge there. Uh, now nah, let's go with a small one small one we can definitely stick in right next to a school so let's do that there's a big wave of happiness swinging through the city immediately and we should start to see some green arrows pinging as a result of that look at that that's what we like to see now that's a good start so you can see this area is very happy the rest of it's improved a little bit and then it's made no real difference over here so we still need more so let's put in 
uh, one of our little dog parks. And I think that could be a good spot. Like I said before, I think it's a shame you can't spawn... Actually, maybe here might be a bit better. Uh, it's a shame you can't spawn stuff, you know, on the side of a footpath. You know, it has to be on the side of a road. I think that's a bit of, you know, a bit of a shame. It would make things a bit easier. That's our little commercial area there. That's, is that one building that's left? One commercial building? No, there's a couple of commercial buildings there. Uh, let's put the dog park in this corner to try and give our commercial buildings a little bit of a boost as well. Oh, look at that. Instant change. So again, we should see a wave of green arrows pinging and buildings being upgraded. That's brilliant. Oh, we've got a flyer. Now are the trucks coming. Yep, look at that look. Underneath the flyover. From literally just around the corner. That's brilliant. Right, let's clear out these uh, abandoned retail buildings. Our industry is still taking a hammering. Traffic flow is still looking a bit hectic. We really do need to start dezoning this at some point, but you know, it's going to really hammer our population if we do that. And I don't want to do that just yet. I want to get more residential spawned in on this side before we start doing that. Can I put in a bigger park? Somewhere over here, perhaps. Oh, look at that. Perfect on that corner. It's going to knock out a few houses, but... Massive impact on the happiness for leisure activities there. And what I can do to fill this space in the middle, just here, is I can draw a road that kind of goes across and connects like that. There we go. And now we can zone in uh, a few extra houses like that and make a, a little bit better use of that little block of space there so we get some new houses immediately spawn in and we're seeing some uh, other little bits dropping in or upgrading one of the two still getting a lot of births you know in these areas where the houses are upgrading to larger houses that's good to see let's actually take a look see if these are utilizing the full space now you see here we've got a small house that's only utilizing the front block and not the rear block and I'm not sure whether or not to demolish that house and let it try and rebuild slightly bigger same over here look we've got a bit of a mishmash of space so what I'm going to do to encourage a big house to move in is I'm going to just dezone that for a second and I'm going to go to select and I'm going to zone in that block there to try and get a big house in there as soon as something builds we'll then do these two squares here so I just need to hang here for a second <clears throat> and there we go that house using up that full space there as you can see so now I can zone that in and that'll be a separate house and we should get more people in that house because it's using a larger zone it's going all the way to the back of that area which is good it's what we needed to see there's one of our police choppers on patrol still getting these houses upgrading look that's fantastic this area is really coming along quite nicely. We're still having a worker shortage over here. Uh, hmm. Let's create this into a district. Using the large tool at the moment. Just to make this a little bit quicker. Elk Heights. Interesting choice of random name there. 
There we go. And let's just take a look at our policies. One of our universal policies. Let's give all of our uh, policies uh, a boost to Parks and Rec for all of our districts. Uh, we've got smoke detectors, still got power usage in place. Yeah, it's worth keeping. Um, let's put water usage in place as well. I'm a smoker, so I would never enforce the smoking ban on people. You know, leave it up to them, let them choose. We have good health services, so it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, we can't do that. That would cripple us. <laughs> uh, do I want to put schools out in this district? Well, that should be turned off because that's uh, these are our blanket policies. Okay. Let's encourage biking as a blanket policy. Uh, okay, yeah, there we go. So, if we now go back to our inspection tool, you can see that all of our districts should now have parks and rec boost and encourage biking, which they do. So that'll help um, with the water usage as well. That'll help lower the amount of water that's being used. That might uh, hopefully give us a bit of a a money save. Let's have a look at our info views. So that's made our water consumption and sewage treatment are much much healthier than they were by putting that water consumption policy in place. Power is still nice and healthy. We've got a lot of power being generated. A lot of wave gates as you can see uh, but we also have those two oil stations there as well now. I might need to look at moving, uh, or not moving, but putting in another um, recycling plant somewhere. We'll have to see. We're okay at the moment. We're not getting any issues there. Uh, general happiness. Commercial happiness isn't great, 76%. Industry happiness isn't great either, uh, at 84. Residential's at 89. Office is really happy at, at 95. That's good. You can see the really noisy, noisy areas all focused around here where there's a lot of traffic we can try reducing some of the traffic noise a little bit by putting in sound boards on some of the roads in fact actually let's do that uh, let's go to upgrade this is our two way no this is what we want here let's start upgrading this with sound boards to help with the noise pollution As it runs through our districts. There we go. You can't do noise boards on slip roads, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but we can put noise boards in there. Uh, we've got a roundabout here. That's a four-lane roundabout. Let's just upgrade that to put sound boards on that as well. go soundboards there and let's do the roundabouts here put soundboards on and this will help with some you know, reducing a little bit of the noise pollution that we're getting so that will hopefully help keep these guys a little bit happier uh, same again over here let's upgrade this one with soundboards Oh, and immediately, look, we put that in, you immediately saw a happy reaction from that commercial building there for helping reduce the noise in the area just a little bit. It all helps. So I'm hoping we'll see the same along here. We might see a couple of these buildings get a little ping of happiness. That was actually in, the, in an upgrade state. That would have been a great one to see if it improved it at all. There we 
Okay, and we'll upgrade this along here as well. And then we're onto the bridge. Okay. Soundboards along there. Uh, we'll do soundboards along here as well. Excellent stuff. And on this motorway uh, junction here. There you can see again the roundabout being upgraded. Pleased these buildings on the very edges of the roundabout. That's good to see. And that's the end of the roads there. <clears throat> what about over here? Now we can do this one as well. Again, another little wave of happiness for the reduction in noise. It might not be much, but it all helps. There we go. And let's do the same over here as well. Oh, 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 that's too big. So just bounced off onto the wrong piece. And we'll do it here as well. Might as well. There we go. So, uh, a nice little bit of uh, noise reduction, hopefully. Uh, we could probably do it along here as well. that roundabout I think we'll leave uncovered for now because there's nothing for it to pollute but there we go that's uh, made a little bit of a difference might not be a massive difference but as I said it all adds up shouldn't be a three lane, that should be a two lane. There we go. Right, let's take another look at the info views. And that has reduced the noise pollution around the roundabout itself a little bit and it's reduced it along here a bit as well. Still really noisy here because of the industry. Industry is always going to be really noisy, there's not really a lot you can do about that. But again, you can see a lot of the noise from these fans being generated. It'll be the same up here with those wind turbines generating a lot of noise. We could look at actually getting rid of those now. We don't need those anymore. We'll get big waves of happiness for getting rid of these. There we go. <laughs> look at those happy, smiley people. And uh, we are almost out of time. So uh, it is that time again for us to put in some subscriber names so uh, Alan uh, Alan Workman has asked for the Workman Industrial Park to be named so uh, it's kind of failing at the moment <laughs> Alan but we'll we'll name it for you and hopefully we can restore this and resurrect it so let's go back to districts let's change the name here oops nope that's policies Uh, I have to manually type this in. I still haven't... Uh, I keep meaning to do this. I keep meaning to dig out my batteries and try and find a replacement for my keyboard. There we go. So we now have the Workman Industrial Park. And I promise, Alan, we will restore it to a, a good working order. It's uh, it's struggling at the moment. Uh, we'll get that fixed. 
Uh, and the next up is uh, Yo Dog It's Jesus wants a road name. So let's find. Uh, where's where do we put that dog park? We put a dog park in somewhere, didn't we? There it is. There's our dog park. So let's name Fairview Street. Yo Dog Park, it's Jesus. <laughs> Road or something like that, I don't know. Yo Dog, it's Jesus Street. Um, there we go, select the name. Rewrite. There we go. Yo Dog, it's Jesus Street. So, that's another subscriber name. Well, another pair of subscriber names added into the city. Uh, we will continue to do this. So, if you do want to be immortalized in the city, uh, then do get those requests in through the comments. Uh, I will add them to the list and I will pick you know two out at random every episode until we have everyone's fulfilled and we have plenty of roads, plenty of districts plenty of services and so on and so forth that we can do so please do get those requests in if you want to get your name you know uh, as part of my city uh, you can see we have done it for quite a few people already so we've got scotter square just added in workman industrial estate we've got pecky's down here pecky lane and pecky uh, limited nicholson farm uh, we have uh, for my good friend adam we have william b smith boulevard there uh, down here uh, we have um Quintanilla Boulevard, Faz Square, Gyatta Square, uh, Anaf Forest, you know, all sorts of different things that we've got in here. Uh, and there are others that I have missed off there as well. So you will be immortalized in the city uh, if you get those requests in. Stick them in the comments below. I will, as I say, uh, put them on the list and we'll pick two at random every week. So that's it from me thanks for watching i am jim bob and i'll be back with another episode of mass transit very soon